I think this question is going to cause a lot of trouble for people, uh, mostly because it's weird, but it's actually really, really easy. And I'll show you a, a harder, more complicated way to get it if we weren't seeing the easy thing. But let's start with the easy thing. Uh, in, for the exponential function f, the table shows above shows several values of x and their corresponding values of f of x, where a is a constant greater than 1. If k is a constant and f of k equals a of a to the 29th, what is the value of k? So we got to build on this, right? Where we have a and then a to the 5th and a to the 9th. And so we're trying to think what, what's going to happen, right? So we could build the equation or we can recognize how did we get from here to here? That's an, that, that's an like, it's not plus 4 because it's not like a linear thing, but it's plus 4 to the exponent, right? This is a to the 1st. So then 4 more gets us 5. And then what do you know if we did 4 again? we get a to the ninth. So let's just continue this chart, right? So if we had four, right, that would be a, that would be nine plus four is the 13th. Five is now a to the 17th plus another four. Uh, six is going to be a to the 21st. Seven is going to be a to the 25th. And eight is going to be a to the 29th, which is what we want. So what is the value? If, if k is the, the number, right, that's the x value. What is the value? It's it's 8. So there you go. It really is just about noticing that pattern. And, and sometimes on the SAT, that is really what it is. There's some algebra situation. Um, you could break it apart and think about the topic and, and general trends and all these big picture things about how exponentials work. Or you can kind of just say, hey, look, it increased by 4. Maybe it's going to keep doing that and just hope for the best. Um, so that's the way that you should do it. And I, I don't actually know what the college board will say here for their explanation, but um, that's probably what they're going to say. Now we could, we could do it other ways. I don't think this is good, but I'm going to show you um, an idea that I had, which was um, to use the, uh, the um, table feature and the regression, right? Cause I can think about this as um, a, uh, a set of points that I want to create an exponential that goes through those points. So I could just kind of copy the table, but if I do that, I can have the one, two, three, no problem. But the A is a bit of an issue because that's not a number. So I can't plot an A, but I could make up a number for A, right? They, they basically just say A is a constant greater than one. So let's change the color here. Why not make A two? And at least then I can think about it pretty easily. Two, right? And this is uh, two to the fifth. So two to the fifth, I'm gonna use this calculator. 2 to the 5th is 32. And then this is 2 to the 9th. So 2 to the 9th is 512. Oh, actually, wait, you know what else you can do? You can just do 2 to the 9th here. 2 to the 9th. So that's the AB button. And there you go. Now, if I scroll, you can kind of see these points, right? There's one, there's another. And then, oh boy, if we go all the way up, yeah, there's the third. So this is the problem is exponentials. Whoosh, they shoot up really fast. So what we're trying to do is put a, a, a line or a, uh, an equation that goes through them. So we can use the regression. So what we would need to do is tell it to use that table. So y1 uh, tells us to go there. And then I'm not going to use equals. I'm going to use the little tilde symbol, which is here. That tells it to do a reg regression. And if it's an exponential, that kind of means, um, uh, let's just use b because we used a before. It would be b to the um, x. So b to the x, but we got to call it x1. So this looks messy, but we're basically telling it to create an exponential that does this. And if I kind of zoom in, you can see that it is an exponential, right? It's going up, but look at what is happening here. It's not actually going through the point that I want it to go through. It's coming close, but it's not going through it. It's basically what the, the, the calculator is doing here is it's saying, there's what you told us to do doesn't work perfectly, but we're going to give you the best thing we can. And so they're giving me this equation where the B is 7.986, which not that far off, close to eight, right? So you might at that point just be like, all right, good enough. Let's make it eight. Um, but I don't know. Why would you note around? It seems weird. I don't know. But we can fix this. The problem is I didn't give it a good equation to, to model, right? So an exponential equation technically has the, um, the general form of a, b to the x, depending on what's going on. Uh, that, that's one way to do it. So you see the b there. Um, and a is kind of confusing because we have a in the story. So I'm, I'm going to actually change it to y equals c, b, x, meaning 
there is the the part that's got the x attached as an exponent, but there's also this other constant out front, and it, it kind of behaves like a y-intercept. So uh, let's not worry about it. But let's put a little c out front to t give it some more stuff to work with. And there it is. Now it goes through the point, but it also you can tell. Look at that r squared being one. That's what we want it to be. That means we found the perfect thing. So this is our equation: c b to the x. And what do we want? We want to know a number that gives us a to the 29th, or in other words, 2 to the 29th. So what we could do, this is, this, again, this is messy. I, I don't recommend this, but it's better than nothing if you're totally confused, is we can figure out y equals 2 to the 29th. And it's a big, crazy number, but what's going to happen now is Gedesmos is going to plot that as a, as a vertical line or as a horizontal line, and we are going to find the intersection of that with our regression in purple, right? So there's a purple exponential, and then there's this now somewhere horizontal line that is the y value that we wanted, 2 to the 29th. But we're going to have to scroll to find it. So this is where the iPad comes in handy. Normally, I hate the iPad for this kind of thing, but look at how easily I can pinch and scroll, and it, it's starting to lose its power. But basically, oh, man, I got to go up to 55, what is that? 536 million. So I got a ways to go here. So let's just zoom, 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 zoom. Lots of this. And eventually I'll see it. I hope. <laughs> um, there it is. Yeah. Okay. So if I tap it, uh, it's giving it to me in this weird scientific notation. I think I can zoom, but basically what I've just done is I found the point. So I'm going to keep zooming back in on the point. Again, this is so much easier because of the iPad. You can see there is a point where it, it, it's hitting the y-axis, but I don't want that. I want where it hits our regression. And you can see it's at that crazy high number for the y, but the x is 8. Exactly what we got. Again, this is dumb. This is a dumb way to do it. It's much longer, obviously, than what we did originally. But I, I, you know, I like giving you guys these kind of things because the, the point of a lot of these hard math ones is to increase the number of tools in our toolbox. And the regression is a powerful tool in certain cases, and it does work here with a little bit of arithmetizing and understanding how regressions work. I, I, I you know, I don't know. That's certainly a more complicated way of doing it than just seeing that the A is increasing by four for every exponent. But I don't know. I'm thinking, what if this were the last question in the first module and you had 10 minutes to play with it, but you would you just for some reason could not see the A to the fourth thing, that it's going up by four. So what would you do? I don't know. If you got 10 minutes, this solution isn't bad. It's better than nothing. So I don't know. What do you think? Give me some comments. Give me some thoughts. If you got something better, then by all means. But I, I'm, I'm working under the assumption that a lot of the questions in the SAT where they come down to just like having a light bulb go off in your brain where you just see a pattern, those things are tough. Some people just don't see the pattern. What if it takes you seven minutes to see the pattern and you only have three minutes to work in the question? That's not good, right? What can we do to kind of work on it and give us another way to see the light bulb? You know, is kind of it. Let me know your thoughts.